Shabbat Shalom everyone. So I want to come up here and make this really quick video and this video will be quick. Um, I wanted to come up here and just bring some clarification on something that I spoke on a couple of times um, in a couple of different videos. Um, I have spoken on, if you've seen them, I've spoken on um, the Holy Spirit and the evidence that you have the Holy Spirit, which the scripture says, speaking in an unknown heavenly tongue. And I wanted to bring some clarity on that simply because um, just now I came across some Israelites that were speaking on something. They were speaking, giving their testimony on something, and they were speaking about their experience um, with meeting other Israelites and um, their experience of speaking in tongues. Um, I didn't finish watching the uh, footage but um, what they were speaking on and what they had happened to them <clears throat> is completely not what I was talking about. And, of course, what they were saying had nothing to do with me. I don't even know these people and they don't know me. But I thought in watching that that I said, hey, if someone is seeing this or thinking um, about this experience or having had the same experience, I wonder, you know, what their position would be on the Holy Spirit as a whole. And so basically, I wanted to clarify from my point of view what I was speaking on. Let me make that clear. Because sometimes I tend to think um, that everyone that's watching understands the word um, as plainly as it is written. And sometimes that's not the case. Some people have different experiences that causes them to... <clears throat> um, you know, have a different perspective or understanding or just questions at all, questions in general. So let me go on what I was talking about. So Luke 11, let's start at verse 14 here. It says, and he was casting and, and he was casting out a devil and it was dumb. And it came to pass when the devil was gone out, the dumb spake and the people wandered, <coughs> excuse me, wandered, not wandered. But some of them said, he casted out devils through Beelzebub the chief of the devils and others tempting sought of him a sign from heaven but he knowing their thoughts said unto him unto them every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and a house divided against a house falleth if satan also be against himself how shall his kingdom stand because ye say that i cast out devils through Be beelzebub and if i by beelzebub cast out devils by whom do your sons cast them out Therefore shall they be your judges. But if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he is trusted and divideth his spoils. He that is not with me is against me, and he that scattereth not with me scattereth. The unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh to him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter in, and dwell there in the last state of the man, of that man is worse than the first. <clears throat> but what I want to speak on was the fact that these... Israelites that the Most High Yahushai, the Messiah Yahushai was um, encountering, were thinking that the Holy Spirit, not just thinking, but saying that the Holy Spirit was demonic. I have touched on this before in each video that I spoke on, but I wanted to make sure I give full clarity. When you receive the Holy Spirit from the Most High, and I was 18 years old when I received it, I had just went to college in a different city that I had went to high school in. And I was in a Christian ministry at that time, a Kojic church, and they would have these 5 a.m. prayers. And so I have always been a person that has been very much about, serious about my walk with God, even from a young child. The first time I repented, I was nine years old. And after I left that church that day, the Holy, not the Holy Spirit, I'm sorry, the enemy came in and spoke to me, just like the scripture says, you know, seed that falls on top of the ground that's not falling in the ground and taking root. Um, the enemy comes in and he started whispering to me and saying, oh, you don't feel anything different. Nothing changed. You know, you're still the same person. And I began to think those thoughts of being nine years old. I didn't even know that it was the enemy. Um, I just thought it was myself. And so I said, oh, nothing's different about me. Nothing changed. So I went on being myself and I let the enemy steal that from me. 
with the person that I was beforehand. But I let the enemy steal that from me. It wasn't until I was 17 years old that I came back and repented. And I was in another church at that time. And I was watching um, this minister, this woman minister and preach. And I saw how at that time I saw the power and authority that she had ministered. And I said, God, I want the same for myself. I want to do ministry. I want to work for you. I want to serve you boldly and, you know, righteously, all of that. And so I sat in the chair and I repented again. I confessed the Lord as my Savior. And at that time I was using the name Jesus. But I never believed that the white man was Jesus. I never was one of those people. Oddly enough, I never believed that the Jewish people were the people of Israel. And I never believed that that white man on those plant, those church fans was the man of the Bible. I honestly, honest, I honestly didn't know that people were out here believing those things. I thought, you know, my father always told me the original Jews are black. And that the Jewish people never believed in Jesus. So I said, there's no way they can have anything to do with the Bible. On top of that, <clears throat> though, that white man holding that little lamb on those church fans, I knew that wasn't my God because when you read the scriptures, the God in heaven doesn't come across as being so respectfully sissified as they paint this white man to be. You know, using this fructis garnet fructis shampoo on his hair and being so soft and meek and like, you know, just weak to me. And I said, that's not the line of Judah. That's not the man in the scriptures. The way the way the man in the scriptures speaks and spit and talks, he don't come across like that. He's loving, he's caring, compassion, all that, but he's also a fierce judge. He's righteous in his anger, and you know, he he holds it down. So I never looked at that white man on those church fans as being God. I just said this is another attempt of white people trying to put their face on something. And that that's a God honest truth. I never believed that. So I was confessing the name Jesus at that time because I was 17. This was in 2004, <clears throat> October 2004, October 14, 2004, to be honest with you, to be exact with you. And um, anyway, so I would confess that name. And I said, God, I want you to, you know, take me and use me. And I was older and I, and I let the word sink in and, and it took root in my life. And then the next year in 2005, I went off to college and I met this church that my sister at the time was going to. Um, she had already went to college in that same city. And so I went there and I went to the 5 a.m. prayers and I asked God, I said, Lord, I want the Holy Spirit. And you said in, my, in your word that you would give it to me if I asked you and I believe for it. And I prayed and I prayed and I began to speak in an unknown tongue. Unknown to me, meaning I didn't understand what it was saying. It, was a, it wasn't a language that I understood, but it was not also a language from hell. And that's what I wanted to clarify. There are people out here, believe it or not that are speaking with unknown tongues, but they are not given by the Holy Spirit. They are not given and inspired by the Spirit of God that comes from heaven. And I want to make sure that people understand that because when you truly have the Holy Spirit and you know that the Holy Spirit from heaven get the one that the Barak HaKadosh comes from the Most High God, there's a peace that you receive. You don't come across, you, you, don't, you don't feel confused. You don't feel like, what is this that you're saying? Or what is it that I'm saying? Um, it, it doesn't come across weird. And when you actually do receive the Holy Spirit, you will also be able to determine even more so when you hear somebody else speaking something that is not the Holy Spirit. Because it, the enemy's job is to imitate everything that God has already done and change it and reverse it and corrupt it. His plan in the garden was to come through the seed that Adam, that, that the Most High made with Adam and Eve and bring his own corrupt seed because, you know, this is, some people may disagree with me, but he wanted to raise up his own seed to emulate the humans on earth to have something made in his own image. Scripture tells us that, that there is a serpent seed in Genesis 3 and 15. The Most High clearly did, says it, that he was going to put enmity between the seed of the woman, which is, you know, I believe the Messiah being born of the woman, the virgin, as well as the seed of the woman, those who come from Eve um, and, you know, and Adam. As well as he was going to put enmity between that and the seed of the serpent. Um, when you look at the world, everything that the world glorifies is exactly everything opposite of what the law teaches. So when you look at, um, for instance, I was watching some videos a few uh, days ago about how this cult, this corrupt culture of music. Now, I don't listen to this music, but I am in this world, so I have seen and heard of these people. But there's new artists that pop up all the time and, and uh, quote-unquote artists. And they push these raunchy, you know, vulgar lyrics on our people, meaning us Israelites. And um, everything about that culture and that world is co 
contrary to the word of God. The scripture tells us in our, in our law, do not raise the daughters of Zion, the daughters of Zion to be a whore. And a lot of and this music pushes that culture to be promiscuous and to be lascivious and to to have sexual freedom and do what you want, do as thou will, so to speak. Um, it also teaches us to not have homosexuality within our, our camp. Um, it teaches that the sons are not to be sodomites. And then you see a lot of this sodomite behavior carrying on amongst these celebrities. And so is it, you know. And so everything that the enemy does is a complete opposite of what the Most High does. So if the Most High has his own people, the, 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 the enemy is going to have his own group of people that he can call his own. If the Most High has his own chosen people, the enemy is going to create his own chosen people just to rival and be against. Um, I particularly believe that, that those people come from the religion of Islam and the seed of Esau and whomever else would join into that religion. But that's my own personal take and I have my reasons for it. And if you watch me extensive, extensively, you have heard me you have heard me speak on that before. Um, and I may one day do an, a full in-depth video just on that. Um, but then again, I don't know. Um, so when you see that the Most High has his Holy Spirit speaking in tongues, as the spirit of God give utterance, walking with power and authority over everything that's in hell and not having fear, you better believe the enemy's gonna come up with something too. This is what was going on in Luke 11. These demons that were, I'm sorry, these, <laughs> let me be clear, I call them demons because anybody that's contrary to the word of God or contrary to God himself I is a demon. But these, these Jews, these Israelite people that were walking not after the spirit, but that refused to receive the Messiah and believe in him and receive him as the son of God, wanted to challenge him as, you know, just, just being wickedly influenced. They said, because he cast out a devil, they said, oh, he's working with, he's working with devils. He does that power. He has that power from a devil. And what did the Yahweh Shai say? The Messiah say, any man, any kingdom that divided, that is divided against himself would not fall. I mean, would not stand, it would fall. There's no way that the kingdom of darkness is going to infiltrate a person and possess a person. And then there's going to be another member of that same kingdom come and run that spirit out. Because they won't be working together to achieve what it is that their kingdom is working to achieve. Which is bringing darkness and corruption and wickedness and destruction on the earth. The, enemy, the scripture says that the enemy comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. So everything in that dark kingdom is aligned with that one purpose, still kill and destroy. When you bring deliverance and set free someone from a demonic spirit, you are bringing the contrary to that, the opposite of that. You are not bringing death, destruction, and stealing healing. You are killing. You are bringing life. You are bringing joy. You are bringing peace. You are bringing deliverance. So the fact that they would say that, oh, he's working with the spirit of the devil, the devil to do this was completely preposterous and foolish. I want to clarify that when I'm speaking of the Holy Spirit, I'm speaking of the Holy, the only spirit that is holy that comes from the Most High God of Heaven, Yahweh. You will find people that imitate and that um, try to recreate, just like when you look at the Catholic Church and they do these exorcisms. Well, if you really look into what the word exorcism means and, and the practice of what they're doing, they have these little books that they speak these little things out of. And those, those things that they're saying are not casting these demons out. What they're doing is they're using those spells, I guess you can call them, I would call them that, incantations or chants, to conjure, I guess, a greater spirit, a stronger spirit than the one that's in that person. And that, that what's going to happen is that that spirit that's in that person is going to now fall into submission to the greater spirit that they just conjured up through their spells. So they're never casting anything out because they don't have power to cast out a devil. A devil cannot and will not cast out a devil because it cannot and it will not divide against itself. It will work to achieve its own goal. So when I speak of the Holy Spirit, I'm speaking of the power from heaven that comes that has authority over everything in hell. And when you speak in that tongue that the Holy Spirit gives you utterance to speak in, you will know that it's of God because it will not check in your spirit as being off. It will not check in your spirit as being weird or strange. Even if you yourself don't have it, you will not think of it and say, oh, this is different. You know, it might be a new experience to you, but you're going to know that this, you're going to feel that peace because anything that God does, it comes with peace. Anything that the devil does, it comes with sorrow and misery and no peace. So I wanted to be clear on that. I'm not saying that, that okay, there are, there are people that, I mean, like I said, there are tongues that are demonic. 
But when you hear the Holy Spirit and you know it's the Holy Spirit and you recognize that it's the Holy Spirit because of the scripture, the signs that follow it, like the scripture says, casting out devils, healing the sick, laying hands on the sick and they shall recover, raising the dead, um, taking up serpents, drinking deadly things and they shall not harm you. These signs shall follow them that believe. This will never come of a person that is filled with a demonic spirit. Even if they're mumbling and mumbling jumbo, whatever, demonic witch language, they what that will never happen. Even if they try to emulate it through sorcery and witchcraft, voodoo, hoodoo, judo, whatever, that you will know because the magicians of Ahab and Pharaoh both tried to emulate that which Elijah and Moses were doing through the power of God, but they failed. They could only go but so far. The Most High will never allow the spirit of the enemy to be able to purposely, I mean, to meticulously, completely mimic and match what he's doing and actually confuse and deceive people to the extent where they stay confused and deceived. You're going to always know the difference between the two unless you just seek to be confused and deceived. So when I said, you know, when somebody tells you, oh, this is speaking, because there's people that, because they, there's people that because they know that there are demonic activities that speak in a so-called unknown tongue. Well, really, it is an unknown tongue. Which language, whatever it may be, gibberish. They will call anything that's speaking in an unknown tongue demonic. And that's what I wanted to clarify. You know the difference. You will know the difference. If you don't know, pray and ask the Father to show you, reveal to you, and he will do just that. There are people that emulate the Holy Spirit, and there are people that actually have the Holy Spirit. I have seen people say, oh, well, the scripture in Acts that talks about the Holy Spirit falling upon them and they spoke in other tongues. Like I said before, yes, he can give you that ability to minister in a language that you've never learned before. And that is a power that the Holy Spirit can give you. But it also has its own heavenly tongue that you speak in when you are communicating to the Father in heaven. That's why the scripture says, let there be an interpreter. If you're going to speak out to the congregation, let there be an interpreter because they don't know what that language is saying. And you need someone who also has the gift of interpretation of tongues, who is given, which is given to them through the Holy Spirit of God, God of heaven, to be able to decipher, decipher and interpret, not decipher, but interpret what thus saith the Lord Yahweh. If there is no interpreter, then let that man or that woman hold their peace because it wouldn't make any sense to speak something and prophesy something and no one no one's there to understand what it's saying. There are people that said, oh, you know, because they were speaking in other languages, oh, it wasn't nothing spectacular. They were just speaking in another language. But those people that were speaking that in Acts had never spoken those languages before. Because if they had, no one would have been amazed at the fact that they were speaking it. So what power gave him that ability to do that? Okay. I don't want someone to be like, okay, well, because they have experienced someone speaking demonically in another tongue, that any time you speak in another tongue, it's always demonic. Not true. Recognize that there is imitation. The enemy wants to deceive. He wants to imitate. He wants to destroy. He wants to copy. He wants to do exactly what the Most High God is doing because he wants to exalt himself above him to be on his level and even higher. So he can't recreate anything because he himself is created and he's not a creator. He's not the originator of anything. So all he can do is create, and, well not create, but rec recreate and imitate what has already been created. So therefore things that the enemy does in his kingdom is going to look kind of sort of similar to what the Most High is doing. But if you watch it closely, you will see the difference. Maybe you were one of those people, but I want you to understand that's not true. I don't want you to just think that because you've experienced somebody that wasn't walking in God and speaking in the spirit of, of holiness. I don't want you to be told by someone who themselves may have never had the Holy Spirit, possibly, that any time they're having the Holy Spirit, is, it, it's, it's, it's not that. I've heard people say, oh, it's just the Torah. The Holy Spirit is a Torah. And I'm like, I don't know how that could be because he said, I will give it to you after I've gone, up to back up, after I've gone back up into heaven to sit on the right hand of God. How can that be the case when the Torah was given to us thousands of years before he even came in the flesh? I've heard people say, oh, it's just the goodwill to do what's right. And that's that. That's nice. But, but, but you know, why would he give us something that we already had? People had already had desires to do what's right, to repent, to change their hearts, to come back to the Most High, even in the Old Testament days. How could that be the case? I feel like when you say that you're making the Most High a liar, because he said, I will give it to you. 
after I have ascended up <laughs> into heaven, upon you shall come fire. Wait for me in the upper room. That's what he told them in the book of Acts. So it can't be those things, or nor can it be, oh, it's just demonic. Like these people said, oh, he's working with demons. He's speaking through, he's, he, he's doing this through, dev, through, through devils. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I wanted to clarify that when I tell you, when I say, don't think that it's demonic, I'm speaking in the sense of the Holy Spirit only. There are demonic tongues out there. But when you have the Holy Spirit and you are walking before God and you have a heart to genuinely serve Him, He's not going to let you be deceived to be tricked by these demonic tongues. You will know the difference. Trust me. You will know the difference. You will know the difference. So I want to clarify that because the Holy Spirit actually is like He said here when a strong man comes in, a stronger than He comes in and overcome him that's what i was saying in my other videos these spirits that had these people that had these spirits in them when how wish i showed up they immediately begin to cry out oh don't bother us let us alone da, 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 because they recognize the power shift that ain't gonna happen when somebody has a demonic spirit because a demon will never be afraid of another demon never oh i mean there might be rankings you know when you there's when you break down the kingdom of hell there are different rankings and so there are some, some some spirits that are stronger than others, but they're not going to be afraid and tremble and terrified of it like how they do when the Holy Spirit shows on the scene. They're not going to cry out to say to those other spirits, let them alone, let them stand that person because those, those spirits are working with the same agenda to deceive and corrupt and to destroy. So if you have a spirit that's in a person that's tearing their life down, whether it be like a spirit of addiction or a spirit of lust or whatever, and they're tearing this person down, when another spirit, the unclean spirit shows up, those unclean spirits in that person with addiction or lust, whatever it is, they're not going to be afraid of that other spirit and say, oh, no, 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 don't let, let us keep doing what we're doing. Don't take us out. They're not going to say that to that because they know that the other spirit is not going to do that because they are all together working to destroy and tear down the people of God and just whomever else they can destroy, the destroyer of the Gentiles, okay? But when how wish I showed up, those spirits cried out, oh, immediately, don't, don't bother them. Don't cast them out because they knew what, what, it, what is verse 22 says? A stronger man than he has come upon them, has shown up. So understand that we are supposed to have the Holy Spirit. It is the gift of the Most High promised us after he ascended back into heaven after his death and resurrection. Okay. It's what we need to be able to not be deceived by all these people out here claiming to be Israelites and preaching their own gospels, yada, yada, yada. We know the word. We will be able to know what is truth because the Holy Spirit leads and guides us and everything. We don't lean on our own understanding because we don't know enough. I don't know anything without the Father. I don't, I don't know anything. I'm just a bag of dust to be real with you. Everything that I have that's good in my life, I attribute it to him and him only, period. Because of my obedience to him, because of me trusting him, because of me following him and doing what he said. That's the only reason why I've been able to get the things that I have in my life that are great, that are wonderful. And even the trials and tribulations that I've had that have grown me and matured me, even as I yet speak right now in this current state. Things that I'm dealing with that have been dealing with for the last four and a half years. That I have been keeping to myself because I don't put it publicly. But I've been allowing the Most High to teach me what I need to know in this season. It's all because of him and his Holy Spirit. So we need that. We need that because that's what gives us power over the enemy. That's what gives us power to be able to determine this person is talking in demonic tongues, which language or whatever it is. Don't fool with them and to not be afraid of them. What did he say? I did not give you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, power, and a sound mind. When a stronger man than he has overcome, power, there's a power shift. So I wanted to be clear of that. I don't want no one being confused when I say, oh, don't let nobody tell you it's demonic. Da, da, da. Don't let nobody tell you the Holy Spirit is demonic. But let somebody straight up tell you and know you for yourself when the enemy is speaking with his demonic tongues. Because you will know the difference. Gibberish, they have no meaning, they have no purpose. Usually they're probably like some kind of spell or incantation to try to conjure up something that's ungodly. When you speak with the Holy Spirit, you're speaking straight to, the, to heaven, directly to the Father in heaven. Period. And we are to have that. Do not deny the Holy Spirit because you've had a bad experience or because someone's told you something that you think makes sense. Or because you've seen somebody that claimed to have the Holy Spirit but really wasn't. A lot of times in these Christian churches, everybody don't have the Holy Spirit. Just because you may, you know, mumble jumble, you know, there's people that teach, open your mouth and speak, whatever. That's not God. <laughs> 
you don't give yourself the inspiration to speak and say whatever. The Holy Spirit gives you the inspiration to speak and say. Okay, because you know not what you're saying. So you speak what the Holy Spirit tells you to say in the Spirit because God in heaven understands it. You don't just open your mouth and speak because you don't give yourself the, un the utterance. It's not coming from you. But then there's other people in these black churches that you I've seen it to you grow up with and they claim to have the Holy Spirit and they're acting a fool they're jumping and jucking and shucking and jucking and all over the place that ain't God let everything be done in decency and in order so don't let these horrible experiences cause you to miss out on even possibly blaspheme the Holy Spirit and put yourself in a position where he can't draw you because you have denied his access to you or his um I don't know what to say you feel, you have it you close yourself off to him because you receive, you, you don't want to receive them because you've experienced these bad experiences. The word is true. Everything I say is in the word. And it, that's it. So, clarifying that. Do not let no one tell you it's just the Torah or it's just the goodwill to do what's right. It just means you got a good heart or it's um, demonic. There are demonic tongues, but the Holy Spirit is not demonic. And you will know the difference. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, as the Spirit of Yahweh, God give utterance as the scripture tells you that you will be filled. You will receive power over the enemy. You will walk in fear. I mean, I'm sorry, you will walk in power, not in fear. You will walk in authority over the kingdom of darkness. You will have power over the enemy. You can cast out devils. You can rebuke the enemy off of your life. You can bind up things that's happening in your life. I've had encounters where I've encountered things with different people that were supposedly your rights. And after I encountered them, child, everything broke loose. All hell broke loose in my life. I was seeing things. I was seeing demonic spirits roaming and running and ripping. And I said, God, what is this? And he be and I began to pray and he began to reveal some things to me that I needed to cut off. People and things that I need to cut off because of connections and attachments. And once I did that, everything went away. This is why you need the Holy Spirit. Because without it, you can easily be deceived and swayed left and right. The Holy Spirit roots you and grounds you. And it gives you the ability to be able to walk and see the enemy even when he doesn't think that he's seen. You'll be able to discern a person's spirit before they even come. Because the Most High will allow you to see these things. He will speak to you. He'll let you know. He'll check in your spirit. Okay, watch this. Mm. Even if you don't know exactly what's going on, the Holy Spirit will check. Mm. Uh -uh. Don't touch that. Mm -mm -mm. Don't do that. Or he'll give you peace. Yeah, trust me on this. I got I got you. I'm good. You're good on this. You're going to succeed in this. I got that. This is my will. I bless you in this. So, I wanted to clarify that. There are demonic tongues. But don't call nothing. Don't call anything that's not demonic, demonic. As these people were doing in the scriptures. Because that's that's a big no-no. Call what's demonic, demonic. And what is righteous, righteous. Alright, everyone. I'm going to leave you with that. Have a blessed Shabbat. Shalom.